<coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Funny. Moving right along. <laughs> I don't know why they even bothered to put that in there in the first place. <laughs> Hey folks, Jordan here with a very weird software video thing today. We're looking at the Windows 98 unattended boot CD, or what's known in this MSFN thread as the unattended and updated boot CD for Windows 98. Now, I guess it's been renamed to the Windows 98 7 Years Later Edition boot CD project, and it's been worked on. You can tell that there's a bunch of things that have been modified and added into uh, Windows 98's normal base image. Lots of updates, lots of drivers, lots of different code lines that are inserted into the OS. And what it also includes is a sort of unattended installation that's designed for ease of use and installs pretty much what you would need to get a Windows 98 PC up and running for the most part. And it is customizable, and it includes a few extra utilities. But one of the biggest things is it has this menu that it boots up into, where it allows you to do a few extra things than, you know, having to fight at the DOS prompt or have your own utilities on separate floppy disks or CDs. They're all included, at least for the most part, for like formatting your hard drive or customizing installation of Windows. Now, unfortunately, this is not like a legitimate like version of Windows that you could you know, readily install on something as it has an embedded license key. Uh, normally, you would not want to include a license key in your version of Windows, but I think you could probably disable that. As you'll soon see in the footage I recorded, I did not. I just went through and I just did the default setup installation method. And um, yeah. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to installing this operating system, given the little introduction that I've given it here on, you know, the screen recording. So, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. So the machine we're going to run Windows 98 unattended boot CD on is the Compact Desk Pro EN Pentium 2 system. And it gives me an excuse to probably give it a good cleaning while I have it down to you know, use this machine for demonstration purposes. It still needs to be cleaned in the worst way possible. But if it could be a perfect prime subject for demonstrating this particular operating system. So the CD's in the drive, so let's go ahead and boot it up. So as you can see, it boots up to a Windows 98 unattended boot CD menu. This is basically just the same Windows 98 menu that you get when you have a standard Windows 98 boot CD. It's just this is a modified text. But we'll go and boot from CD-ROM. We get another menu and another timer. Now basically what this has is a lot of different uh, options that you can pick from. Whether it be loading drivers and running this main menu, checking the RAM for errors, partitioning drives with F-Disk or another utility, um, custom options, formatting the hard drive and installing Windows, just installing Windows or exiting to a DOS prompt. I figure we'll look at the menu first. So I'm gonna go and load optimal drivers. That way we can get to the menu. But I figured it'd be interesting to show you guys what the menu looks like. So it gives you a number of options that you can pick from. Obviously the biggest one is this install Windows 98 thing with a 10 year anniversary edition thing on it. I don't know what the purpose of that is for, but it's there nonetheless. Automatically format the current hard drive and start setup, reformat, or reinstall the operating system. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to what I'm reading here. Format the drive and return to the menu, settings and all that stuff. You can choose between all this different stuff. So if we go to the settings menu real quick, you can change what is set to, uh, well, be inside of that run file that configures the system automatically. So I figure we might as well change some things in here since we're at it. Um, let's see, English Australia, we're probably gonna fix that to English United States. So, we need to change the current code, and we want to change that to L0409, and that's what I want it to be. And we need to change the time zone to Pacific time, so change time zone, it is U1, correct? I'm getting a lot of messages at the moment. <laughs> and I think everything else we should be fine with, so I'm going to go back to the menu and install Windows 98. As you can see, it finds this MS batch file. This is how you know this is not a legitimate copy of Windows 98 because normally it doesn't include a hard coded product key like that. Normally you really only see that on OEM things, but you know, this is just a thing that somebody created, so they're probably using their own license and they're probably fine with giving it out, which normally you're not supposed to do, but 
you know, Windows 98 is out of support, and I'm pretty sure Microsoft doesn't give two shits anymore about it, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, go ahead and use the file on the CD and let it do its thing here. Now, I believe this also checks for over a gig of RAM. I'm not sure if that gets tripped if you have over a gig of RAM or if it actually patches the system. Uh, I'm really not sure about that. I'm pretty sure it'll stop you from installing if you have over a gig of RAM. I'll have to try that on a virtual machine in a different uh, segment of this video just to see if that's actually true. Anyway, since this is a Pentium 2 computer designed for Windows 98, we're just going to install full on Windows 98. Um, if you're installing onto an older computer like a 486DX with, you know, obviously the math coprocessor, or an original Pentium like a 66, a 60, or a 75, or maybe even a Pentium 90, you could probably go Windows 98 Lite, which would reduce the amount of crap that it installs. Like, I believe it takes out Internet Explorer, and you can install something else of your choice for a web browser, which kind of cuts down on the bloat. Um, I know some people tend to do that. So now what it's doing is it's copying over the cab files onto the hard drive from the Windows 98 folder. And it stores it on a local folder on the hard drive, so that way in case Windows wants access to the CD, you don't have to put in the CD, it'll just look on the hard drive because it's going to install from that folder that it's creating on the hard drive that has all these files in it. So it's a pretty nice little convenience that it has already baked into it, which is nice. So in just a moment here, once this finishes copying cab files, what it's also gonna do is copy over driver cab files and update files onto the hard drive at the same time. And uh, cat's just being a dork over there on my messy bed. So please don't comment about the mess. Um, I wasn't really prepared on making a video, but I figured why not? So uh, this is gonna take a few minutes to copy because there's a lot of files to copy off the CD. And eventually once it gets done, then Windows 98 setup will start and it's pretty much unattended setup. So I'll have to make sure that once the setup starts, I'll have to get it on video because there actually is some interesting stuff about it. So I'll be back once Windows 98 setup starts. As you can see, it's copying over all the stuff. So yeah, I believe it also installs IE6 at the same time while it's installing Windows. So you don't have to do that later. So that's pretty nice convenience. And here we go, copying over some driver packs. It doesn't, ex it doesn't specifically label what files they are. My guess is they're completely custom driver packs made by the person who put together this uh, disk image. So I don't know what drivers they contain or what the file names are. They just are there. So I guess that's kind of nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting bugged with Facebook Messenger. <laughs> okay, there's all the individual files. There they are. Okay, so there's a couple ATI drivers, some Trident drivers, some Asus drivers, apparently. And the hard drive is crunching like crazy. So, okay, SIS, this must be just a bunch of video drivers for era-appropriate graphics cards, I think. There's some NVIDIA drivers in there, you can tell by the NV at the beginning of those DLL names there, so. All right, well, I guess this will be the last thing here because I think that's all that's really interesting about this, so now I'll be back once setup actually launches. And I pretty much skipped to the more interesting part, so I'm gonna move the mouse out of the way so you can actually see what these little captions say. I'll try to read them as best as I can. Welcome to the unattended boot CD for Windows 98. During the installation process, you'll learn about some of the enhancements to the boring old standard Windows 98. I didn't think Windows 98 was boring at all. <coughs> blah, 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 add-ons and applications. Windows 98 is still alive and kicking. That's gonna be a phrase you're gonna see a lot. Windows 98 just got better. No, really, it just did. The CD installs most files from Auto Patcher for Windows 98 and all the others are offered in the post-install apps menu. I'm not sure if I remember where that comes in, I think. You don't ever see that, unless of course you run off the CD, I can't remember. But uh, I believe at this point we could probably take the CD out, but I'm not going to just because I'm not sure if it needs anything off the CD. But otherwise, other than these modified things, pretty much the setup process is exactly the same until it reboots and it gets into the post um, DOS setup sort of thing. You'll see what I mean. Windows 98 updated to February 2008. This new release includes hundreds of enhancements and new features that originate not from Microsoft, but from the awesome community on MSFN at msfn.org, which is still actually operating. Internet Explorer 6 SP1. Internet Explorer 5 just doesn't cut on the modern web, so the latest version installs all updates to February 2008. And even then, this doesn't cut it on the modern web, so pretty much your best bet is going to be Opera 12.02, and even then, that's out of date, so I mean... Really, Windows 98 really isn't all that up-to-date anymore, but 
Oh well, that's the price you pay for installing Windows 98. Update for drives over 137 gigs, which is previously a limitation of Windows 98. And uh, that's a nice thing because this adds support for native 48-bit logical block addressing, which Windows 98 normally does not have. I think the first version of Windows to have that was Windows 2000, but that was only on NT-based operating systems, and NT4 didn't have that. So I think Windows 2000 was the very first that actually had support for 137 gig drives or higher. Um, Windows ME also did not have that, I'm not sure. And another fix is um, if you copy a file over two gigs and Windows Explorer doesn't work, so apparently that was fixed. I'm not sure if that's because they use a different file browser and they just completely replace the Internet Explorer based Windows Explorer. I'm not sure about that because I don't remember if that's the case. Um, I could be wrong though, of course. I know that it installs by default another Explorer kind of thing, but I think you can also still use the Internet Explorer based uh, file browser. But again, I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Some native USB support for flash drives, cameras, and other stuff. So that's nice. That's one thing that I know that Windows 98 lacks by default. That is one thing that I like about Windows Millennium Edition is Windows Millennium Edition already has all that stuff built in. I know a lot of people really don't like Windows Millennium Edition, but really it's not all that bad as it sounds. Some updated Windows components, so that's nice. But no, in all seriousness, I mean, Windows ME, as long as you install all the updates and patch it, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> Funny. Moving right along. <laughs> I don't know why they even bothered to put that in there in the first place. <laughs> Some good stability updates. Windows shutdown supplement. Oh, so they must have fixed the unstable shutdown thing, which I know Windows 98 had a tendency to have. This version of Explorer is much faster and can display icons in 256 colors. Nah, no, really. <laughs> Providing much needed XP-like functionality for certain Windows components include a new network GUI system that comes with a custom age system tray network icon. I know what they're talking about because they update the little icon that shows up down in the taskbar. I know exactly, or the system tray, sorry. Well, it's in the taskbar, but I meant to say system tray. Bunch of different hot fixes, which I believe are just Microsoft updates, but this one's unofficial. That includes 128-bit SSL encryption, which is pretty nice to have. Probably not the most crucial thing, but it's still nice to have. Got some media player replacements from Windows Millennium Edition and XP, because of course, Windows 98 does have support for Media Player 9, and also has support for DirectX 9.0C, so that's always nice to have. Of course, if Windows 98 is the minimum operating system that you know uses DirectX 9.0C all the way up and through uh, Windows XP. Ah, some data access components. Those are all probably needed. I'm not sure entirely what those particular things do, but my guess is they're important enough that they need to include them. So that's kind of nice. Ah, some Visual Basic stuff. I think I actually have a copy of Visual Basic 6 somewhere. I'm not sure. Um, like the programming version of Visual Basic, like the full suite, not just the run times. I don't know where that actually is. That'd be kind of interesting to install. Probably not in this video, but it'd still be interesting to install nonetheless. Use Windows 98 on older computers that don't have enough RAM for Windows XP. Windows 98 is still alive and kicking thing again. But, um, well, that is sort of true, but... Even then, Windows XP is, well, ultimately a lot better on older machines because it's just the all-rounder and you get a lot of software support. There's advertising for Windows Update here previously. Needless to say, it has been changed to reflect reality. Well, duh. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, even then, I mean, MSFN probably doesn't even have anything for uh, this anymore. I hope you still use Windows 98 for many years to come. I sure will, because obviously I have a lot of old computers that can still make use of Windows 98 and whatnot. I'm actually planning on doing a video coming up here eventually this summer where I would like to explore Windows 98 and Millennium Edition because they kind of get uh, grouped together because they're so similar. And I want to see if one could technically still 
use it in 2018. Um, I know that's probably a thing that somebody's already done, but I want to give it a, my own comprehensive look. I actually want to see how it is in my perspective. I Because I think there's a few things that people don't really understand that people actually need to use. Like, for example, the like Google Docs system or OneDrive or Office Online or something like that. So I want to see if those still work under Windows 98 or ME. And other uh, HTML5 based components, which... I think you're actually kind of important and some people actually regularly use so it'd be nice to know if you actually had that peace of mind so that's something I'd like to work on in the near future uh, I don't know when I'm not going to say when I'm going to be able to get to it because I'm still in school right now but it'll it'll happen when it happens so yeah so much for this being an unattended setup <laughs> we just uh, skip on that for now. Guess we don't have sound right out of the box. All right, I'm back again. Here you can see the modified Windows 98 setup thingy here, which shows some of the extra stuff that it's working on. Here you can see it's installing Windows Media Player 9. We'll just move that out of the way real quick. But you can see it does a few extras in addition to what Microsoft already does with Windows 98 including some codecs, some updates, um, system configuration, so it configures the theming engine before it gets into Windows, although I think it just uses the standard theme before it gets into Windows. But you can see that it's starting on some of the stuff that it updates before, of course, you can use the computer. And eventually, what's gonna end up happening, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch it on camera, I'll probably try to do that since, uh, you know, I'm doing a video on this. But a little DOS prompt is going to show up on the side here that says installing updates while it does its, its, its uh, updates installation. So that'll pop up. So, yeah. That claim about having 10 minutes of estimated time remaining is actually kind of accurate because there's a lot of stuff this thing does. So I hope that I'm capturing this in enough detail for you guys to watch. I hope that this is all right for you guys. So, yeah. Okay. Time for some codecs, I hope. Whenever it decides it wants to finish off this Windows Media Player 9 setup. <laughs> Although, I don't know if it actually sets it up inside of this, or if it just extracts the files. I don't remember for sure. Anyway. It's a sneaky DOS prompt. It says it's installing updates. Oh, sorry. It's installing U-dates. It's installing U-dates. It's not updates, it's U-dates. That's how you know this is legitimate. Okay, so here we are getting into Windows, but we're not quite done yet. In fact, we're far from done. This is about the halfway point. So... Apparently we get to install our monitor, so that's nice. We do have drivers for the display. I don't remember what display adapters in this computer. I don't remember for sure, but whatever. Um, plug and play monitor, yeah, that's fine. Obviously Windows is gonna have that monitor driver built in, so whatever. But like I was mentioning, this is pretty much half the battle, so. Turn the sound up just to make sure that it's working because I think it was working. Yeah. Oh, look, they're using this Sound Blaster live sound effect to uh, use as the login sound. How interesting. But it's going to install all the rest of those updates that it was going to do. It was only stage one at the time of when Windows was setting itself up. Now it's installing all the rest of them, or it's going to. So eventually, once we reach the desktop, it's going to start opening up a bunch of. DOS prompts and it's going to start installing a bunch of updates so whenever it decides it wants to get to the desktop because the hard drive light is indeed stuck on solid right now so uh, yeah not really anything exciting at the moment because it's just basically going to install updates and it's probably going to restart and then we should be able to use it I think if not it'll take a couple of restarts I don't know basically boring setup stuff so I'm probably just going to go ahead and skip the rest of it just because it's a bunch of DOS prompts with a bunch of text in it that really doesn't you know, have great importance, so I'll just come back when we're all set up and ready to go. And here we are with the setup all complete. You can see that we have a different visual style than what Windows 98 normally comes with. However, the start menu is exactly the same. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, see what there is here for, well, wallpapers. 
The default one it picks is called Longhorn. This is probably from the very early, like, Milestone 4 builds, I think they were. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that was. But all the other Windows 98 wallpapers are in there. There's also a few other ones in here, such as this thing called Arrow Classic. And there's this Longhorn thing, which looks identical. Novum OS, um, Renovatio 98, I don't know what the heck that is, Tenet XP. This one's actually one of my favorite ones, so I'm going to go ahead and set this one. And yes, this does use active desktop, so it is quite slow. And we only have an ATI Rage Pro, a 3D Rage Pro more like it, so... Mm, might be pushing it a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and go 1024 by 768 at 16-bit color. Shouldn't be pushing it too much by doing that. There's a lot of different themes inside of this operating system that you can pick from, in addition to the ones that come with Windows 98. In particular, one that's very interesting is the Windows Vista Ultimate theme here. Or at least one of them. You can see it kind of has this sort of... I don't know. What's another one that has the Vista Arrow theme in it? i got to find it here real quick. Well, this kind of does the arrow basic thing there for all intents and purposes. And I really froze the active desktop. Well, let's fix that real quick. There's one that has the Vista like glass theme, and I'm trying to find if there's something in here that'll have that. I don't know which one it is. Let me try just Vista. <laughs> it's probably going to make a fool of me because these are all the standard Vista basic themes, so... Oh, come on. There we go. There's one that looks kind of like Vista. You can kind of see it has that sort of look to it, although it's not transparent. But for some people, it's probably a decent compromise. There's quite a bit of stuff installed on this, including 7-Zip, CCleaner, CD Check, Cute PDF uh, Writer, IFFD Show, Foxit Reader, G-Spot, Irfan View, Firefox, uh, Nero Stuff, Print Key, Stat Bar, some... WinRAR copy down there. You got VLC, XVID, XY Plur. Um, now, like I like I was telling you about, I think they do have like an Explorer replacement. Yeah, it kind of. Well, this is actually the Internet Explorer uh, thing, but they have that XY Plur in there. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the one that has the update for the over two gigabyte file thingamabobber. I'm really not sure if this is it or not. I would assume not. I think this is something completely different. But yeah, you still got the Windows 98 style thing here. So, yeah, there's more to this than uh, just themes. There's also a bunch of updates like they were talking about. And obviously this this whole thing of, well, I don't need to deal with the proxy server. I don't have a proxy server on my network. But uh, we'll at least get the internet connection thing out of the way here. Ooh, Yahoo Toolbar. Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. It also adds tab browsing to Internet Explorer 6, which I think is something to do with uh, the Yahoo toolbar, which is kind of interesting. Like, it opens a new window, and then you get this tab, and it, like, swaps windows on the fly. So, kind of interesting, I suppose. Could be useful to some people. I'm doing auto here, because the monitor's out of sync here. And one nice thing is it sets the homepage to blank. It doesn't set it to MSN or something, so that's another nice touch. However, um, unfortunately, it looks as if uh, I can't close that. There we go. You had to close all the tabs before you can close Internet Explorer. It does come with Firefox. I don't know what version, but we're about to find out. I'm assuming it's like 2.0.0. something. Probably not 2.0.0.20 because I think this came out before that particular release. But I could have a shock. I could have a shock. Uh, no, I don't import anything. And I don't suppose Kernel X is installed either. I think this was before the days of when Kernel X was a thing. So I'd have to get that myself. But unfortunately, I'd have to sideload that just because you can't natively, at least right away, download it on Windows 98 unless you had an old version of Opera, which I think the latest version for Windows 98 is like, um, I think it's like 10.10 .10 or something like that. Whereas Windows Millennium Edition has 10.63, something like that. Oh God. Oh God. Yes, accept the certificate. Yes. Yes, stop, 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 stop. It's also a theme on Firefox to kind of make it look like Internet Explorer. 
um, Internet Explorer 7 to be specific, so that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if that was something that was done from the developer. I would assume so. Um, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. We have Firefox 2.0.0.12. So not quite the latest release, but it's close enough, I suppose. Uh, yes, that is the default browser. Thank you for installing Adblock Plus. Oh, nice. Uh, just do the Easy List USA thing. Sure, why not? Subscribe to that list. That's fine. I wonder if it'll actually find any updates for this. That'll be interesting. No, nope, no. Nope. I think they shut the update servers down for that. But obviously, you can update that later if you really wanted to. So, uh, one thing that I'm really interested in looking into is uh, what version of CCleaner is installed. I think that's the latest for Windows 98, which is like 2. Point something or another. No, I think it can go a slight bit newer. I'm not entirely sure. Although, just for fun, let's try checking for updates. I think it's going to take me to Firefox and load the CCleaner website. Not really sure. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it's going to do, so no thanks. So, uh, get out of your Firefox. So, yeah, that works. I'll probably have to find another version of that. As you can see, uh, 128 megs of RAM. So it's actually running pretty well for what it is. I have to say, it's not too bad. I think this is all the codecs that go into Windows Media Player, which is Windows Media Player 9. So next, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Spam the now playing button so I don't get the stupid error. I like it works anyway. I wonder, media library. Uh, oh wait, that's the one. That's the local one. I'm I'm dumb. I meant to hit the media guide. I think I don't think this works anymore. Yeah, I think Microsoft shut that server down because Groove Music decided it was going to take over, and then that flopped. So yeah, no wonder. Oh god, the taskbar got really huge. <laughs> But yeah, that's one of the features that Windows 98 didn't actually have initially was the locking taskbar. So that was an update that was unofficial. Just in case anybody was wondering. I wonder if there's anything in terms of the documents. Uh, no pictures and uh, just the sample music from Media Player. So I think that's about it. Um, there's a few other things on here that I could take a look at, but really it's not all that interesting. I mean, stat bar is one thing, but I don't think that's really going to have anything really productive for us to look at other than CPU stuff, but I don't really need that, so I'll just turn that off. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up. So that is Windows 98 Unattended Boot CD on a Compact Desk Pro EN Pentium 2. So that's about it for now, I guess. So thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you all.